good evening everyone and welcome to today's session so we are on day 5 of uh, day 4 four not 5 four of neuro anatomy we discuss the gross anatomy of the brain and uh, cerebral circulation the spinal cord gross anatomy the various tracts in the spinal cord the lesions in the spinal cord and the ascending and descending tracts of the brain stem so this is what we have reviewed and also cranial nerves these are the important issues we have already finished in the neuroanatomy we invite dr rohit tejos raipur kavi akshara shahela bharati and uh, the students of tirupati visakhapatnam karnool etc etc <clears throat> so doctor today we shall discuss trigeminal system auditory system vestibular system and uh, the lesions of the brain stem and the various syndromes which are associated with the lesions of the brain stem so today we shall harvest our knowledge of neuroanatomy onto the domain of the clinical neurology by discussing the brain stem lesions is the is the voice good huh clear for everybody please let me know is the voice is uh, uh, going strong and clear for everybody <clears throat> so we also have dr sujata rohit and others who have joined us now trigeminal system we have trigeminal nerve which is the largest cranial nerve which is exiting um which is exiting the brain stem from the pons trigeminal nerve is also called the nerve of the first branchial arch the mandibular division of the trigeminal is called the nerve of the first branchial arch trigeminal basically contains the general somatic afferent and the special visceral efferent both groups of the fibers now what is the main part of the sensory part about the trigeminal <clears throat> is the voice clear for everybody loud and clear just please punch is the voice loud and clear yes typically the trigeminal provides the sensory innervation to the face and also to the oral cavity it innervates the dura of the anterior and middle cranial fossa and it innervates the muscles of mastication as all of you know very well so what are the three divisions of the trigeminal you are not going to forget doctor ophthalmic maxillary and mandibular are the three divisions now if you look at the pain and temperature in our body body means trunk and limbs it comes through the anterolateral spinothalamic tract similarly we have a trigeminothalamic pathway which is the one which carries the pain and temperature which comes from the face that's what we need to basically appreciate now if you look at the trigeminal system trigeminal system we have various components in trigeminal nuclei we have one spinal nucleus main sensory nucleus mesencephalic nucleus in the midbrain and there is one motor nucleus why so many nuclei for the trigeminal have you ever wondered because trigeminal is one of the very large cranial nerve it has many functions and those functions have been uh, differentiated into each of these different uh, nuclei is what need to be remembered so spinal nucleus spinal nucleus of the trigeminal has one caudal part interpolar part and a oral part out of this the caudal part is the one which basically carries the pain temperature and the itch which is coming from the face 
it is the one which receives then the main sensory nucleus all that uh, mechanosensory information is there no the jaw is moving the joints are moving the muscles are stretching all that information comes to the main sensory nucleus that is from the golgi tendon organs and uh, from the muscle spindles of the face is received by the main sensory then the midbrain may jo bhi mesencephalic nucleus hai that basically receives the jaw proprioception and motor nucleus is the one which basically goes and innervates the muscles of the jaw so there is a reason we have four different nuclei one in midbrain other extending all the way from midbrain into the pons into the spinal cord and medulla so that's how we have the various nuclei so let us have a look this is the mesencephalic nucleus which is there in the midbrain then we have one main sensory spinal trigeminal nucleus it has got three parts oral part interpolar part and caudal part the spinal trigeminal this is the main sensory then we have one trigeminal motor nucleus so these are all the various nuclei if you look at the trigeminal motor and main sensory where are they located doctor those two are basically located in the pons mesencephalic is extending from pons into the midbrain and spinal trigeminal is extending all the way from the pons into the medulla is what you have to ultimately remember now let's talk about uh, each of this nuclei if we say before we go to nuclei there is one ganglion which is there for the trigeminal called trigeminal ganglion where all this nuclei are communicating with the trigeminal ganglion where is this ganglion located doc there is one trigeminal fossa which is there in the petrous part of the temporal bone in the middle cranial fossa and uh, there the dura gets duplicated and forms a typical place a nest for the staying of this trigeminal ganglion which is called the meckel's cave in which the trigeminal ganglion basically stays now what will the trigeminal uh, ganglion basically contain what kind of neurons pseudo unipolar ganglion cells which are the first order neurons for the for, these are the first order neurons for the trigeminothalamic tract ttt yesterday we discussed no trigeminothalamic tract so the, its first order neurons are typically located in the trigeminal ganglion now let us take up each of the divisions of the trigeminal trigeminal is having one ophthalmic division it typically lies along the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus it enters the orbit through the superior orbital fissure we should not forget basically now what are the various branches of the ophthalmic nerve doctor ophthalmic nerve will be giving rise to nasociliary lacrimal then one frontal nerve which in turn will be giving rise to supratrochlear and a supraorbital nerve and the nasociliary will be giving rise to the branch going to the ciliary ganglion which in turn will be giving rise to short ciliary nerves then there is one posterior ethmoidal nerve and a long ciliary nerve and uh, infratrochlear nerve antrithmoidal nerve and a dorsal nerve so this is all the way this is the way typically the of thalamic division of the trigeminal lot of times questions are asked on posterithmoidal is a branch of which nerve similarly antrithmoidal is a branch of which nerve nasociliary is a branch of which nerve so you must be 100% sure what are the branches of the of thalamic division of the trigeminal so of thalamic mainly gives rise to frontal nasociliary lacrimal nasociliary gives rise to long ciliary short ciliary and nasal and ethmoidal and frontal will be giving rise to supraorbital supratrochlear is another way that we basically summarize what will this ophthalmic division ultimately will be innervating doctor the forehead the dorsum of the nose the upper eyelid 
and the cornea and conjunctiva and the mucous membranes of the nasal vestibule and the frontal sinus and the cranial dura. These are all innervated by that ophthalmic division. Then you know corneal reflex. If you touch with a wisp of cotton, you ask the person to look to the other side. Then you will find the white part, sclera. While he is looking towards the other side, you bring the wisp of cotton and touch. Immediately he closes the eyelid, which is called the corneal reflex. And the afferent limb of this is basically by the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. So in summary, if you look at the corneal reflex, from the cornea through the ophthalmic division, it comes to the trigeminal ganglion and reaches the chief sensory nucleus. Then chief sensory nucleus has a communication to the seventh cranial nerves, motor nucleus, which is also located in the pons. And motor nucleus on the seventh nerve will be giving rise to the seventh cranial nerve, which will ultimately go and innervate the orbicularis oculi, which lead to the closure of the eyelids. That's how it happens. So there can be an interruption at the level of the trigeminal nerve, in which case there will be no direct nor even consensual light reflex, I mean corneal reflex. Then if there is any uh, lesion at each of these uh, um, various parts of the corneal reflex, afferent and different limb, you need to be very clear what happens with the direct and indirect, uh, I mean consensual corneal reflex. Then. Maxillary nerve is the next important nerve that we need to be very clear. It is also staying in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus. It exits through the foramen rotundum, rotamax is a typical name of the pen which you have to remember. Then it innervates the upper lip, the cheek, the lower eyelid. Lower eyelid, upper eyelid is by the ophthalmic division. Then the anterior portion of the temple, paranasal sinuses and uh, the nasal, upper mouth, pharynx, gums, teeth, heart palate, soft palate, cranial dura, they are all innervated by the maxillary division. Then what is mandibular division of the trigeminal? Male ovale, so mandibular is ovale, foramen ovale, it will be coming out. It has got a motor component. What is motor component in a, in a way, doctor? All the muscles of the mastication, they are able to chew the food and eat, is all the courtesy of the mandibular division of the right, geminal. So, the temporalis, masseter, lateral, medial pterygoid that enables our jaw to protrude, retract, protrude, retract. Ultimately, entire Harrison, we will be chewing between the gums and eat the medicine. So, muscles of mastication. Then, there are two suprahyoid muscles which are innervated by the mandibular division, mylohyoid and the anterior belly of the digastric are the two important muscles because posterior belly is innervated by the, by the facial nerve. Then tensor tympani, valley palatini are the also the ones which are important for the soft palate movement. They are, uh, I mean, the valley palatini. And tensor tympani in the middle ear, they are all the ones which are innervated by the mandibular division. Then what is the sensory component of it? The lower lip, the chin, the posterior portion of the temple, the axillary meatus, axillal ear, teeth of the lower jaw, and the oral mucosa and the anterior two thirds of the tongue, sensory supply, not taste, is by the mandibular division of the trigeminal and the temporomandibular joint and the cranial dura, they are all innervated by the mandibular division. Then it is very important that this mandibular division will provide the general sensory afferents from the external ear also will enter into the trigeminal system and they will be using the, that is from the external ear, the sensory afferents, they will be using the spinal trigeminal tract nucleus is what need to be remembered. 
Now, doctor, the next important thing that we need to remember in the trigeminal system is spinal trigeminal tract. Spinal trigeminal tract and the spinal nucleus of trigeminal. So, how many nuclei are there for the trigeminal doctor? There is one main sensory. What are nucleus? Mesencephalic nucleus and one spinal nucleus. Spinal nucleus has three parts. A oral part, caudal part, blah, blah, blah. But ultimately, if you remember, there is one spinal nucleus of trigeminal, more than enough. Now, what is this spinal trigeminal tract? It typically extends from the level C3 to the level of the trigeminal nerve in the mid pons. Cervical spinal cord C3 is there, no? From there, it will extend up to the trigeminal nerve in the mid pons. So, just like we have a dorsolateral tract of Lysire, it is a homologue for that. I mean, you have uncrossed fibers carrying pain and temperature from the body and uh, limbs, no? Similarly, the, this spinal trigeminal tract also is a uncrossed uh, tract which is bringing pain and temperature from the half of the face until spinal nucleus of trigeminal. From there, it will decussate and go to the contralateral thalamus ultimately. Right? So, that is the reason why this all so much emphasis is needed. Suppose if you get a lateral medullary syndrome, then you are anterolateral spinal thalamic tract is affected, but that is bringing the pain and temperature from the opposite side. Hence, in the lateral medullary syndrome, what will you lose? You lose the pain and temperature on the opposite side. Then, if you go above the level of the, uh, I mean, if you take the lateral medullary syndrome, it also affects the spinal trigeminal nucleus. But spinal trigeminal nucleus is receiving the Spinal thalamic tract, I mean the pain and temperature, that is the spinal trigeminal tract fibers are there, no? They are coming from the ipsilateral pain and temperature. So, the loss of the pain and temperature will be ipsilateral in the face, but contralateral in the body and limbs if the lateral medulla get affected. That is the reason you need to know what is a decussated tract and which is not a decussated tract. So, what is spinal trigeminal tract basically is doctor? It is an undecusated tract until it reaches the same side, it will bring and report to the trigeminal nucleus of the spinal, spinal trigeminal nucleus. From here, the fibers will decusate and go to the contralateral thalamus. So, any lesion in this area only makes the pain and temperature ipsilateral to be lost. That is what I want to obsessively remind you. Now, doctor, if you take a cut section, Typically, you have an anterolateral system which is located in the lateral part of the medulla only. See, this is the level of the medulla where we have taken a cut section. You have the anterolateral system. You also have a spinal trigeminal tract which is also located laterally. Both of them can get affected whenever there is a lateral medullary syndrome. But spinal trigeminal tract brings pain and temperature from the ipsilateral half of the face. But anterolateral spinothalamic tract will be bringing the pain and temperature from the contralateral side. So, there is a loss of the pain and temperature on the contralateral side. So, that is all the story about the trigeminal nucleus. Now